Greetings, I'm Pastor David Reich from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church of Fox Chapel. This video is for June the 28th, 2020, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, Lectionary 13. I'm standing outside of our church building along the road running in front of it today because roads connect people and places. And in the readings today, we'll hear about the connections that arise from the mission of Christ Jesus. Those are very important. A couple of them to be highlighted, uh, specifically our designated monthly benevolence coming up in July, is Lutheran World Relief. It's a very worthy organization. I would encourage you to support Lutheran World Relief financially. You can do so very easily by uh, going to their website, lwr.org, and there are buttons on their website if you wish to donate. So Lutheran World Relief is a connection that arises out of the mission of Jesus, specifically Lutherans in North America. It connects us as we show benevolent care to our neighbors throughout the world. Another connection is with you, those who view these videos. We would love to hear from you. If you have questions about any of these videos, or if there's a particular topic you would like to hear addressed in a future video, we'd really encourage you to leave a question or a comment in the uh, section designated for that with these videos. Blessings in Christ this day and always. A reading from Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, 
When the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. And a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet, in the name of a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Here ends the reading. About three years ago, my family was living in Florida on on a very hot, humid, sunny June day. A representative from AT&T showed up, knocked on the door, and my wife answered. The representative started to make his sales pitch. He wanted us to switch from our current internet provider to AT&T, and in order to do this, to close his sale, he started out by trying to make small talk. There in the hot sun, as my wife stood just inside the door, he mentioned what kind, wonderful people our neighbors were. He then moved on to ask if there was anybody in our household who watched sports. I think he was very disappointed by the answer, which was no. I think he probably was also a little bit shocked. But undeterred, he redoubled his efforts and tried another line of attack. He asked if we had any computer gamers in the house because he was confident that the service AT&T provided would be faster than what our current provider was able to give. Again, disappointed by my wife's response, no, there were no computer gamers in our household at that time. But all of this shows is how important connections are. Another example of this was when our family moved to Pittsburgh. After I'd received a call to Good Shepherd, but before we had moved, my wife started looking for a job in the Pittsburgh area and had absolutely no luck. It was only after we arrived here, after we had a Pittsburgh mailing address that she started to get interviews and was eventually hired. In the passage read today from the Gospel according to Matthew, Jesus also mentioned connections. He said, Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Those words are a continuation of what was heard two weeks ago. Jesus had called the twelve disciples to be his apostles, and he authorized them to go, proclaiming the presence of the kingdom of heaven. The twelve were supposed to attend to a connection unlike any other. As we heard last week, it is enough for disciples to be like their master. Instead of seeking to connect with other people in order to make a sale or to get something from them, like that representative of AT&T, the apostles, rather, 
were sent so that other people might actually receive something from Jesus and from the God who had sent him. The Church of Jesus, authorized to engage in his mission, can be a means of connecting people to a God they otherwise would never recognize. That connection is not something we humans can create from within ourselves. It can only ever be received. That was the point in the reading from Jeremiah. We heard about Hanani. Hanani had simply declared himself to be a prophet of the Lord, when in reality, Hanani was nothing more than a yes man. He told the ruling classes what they wanted to hear. But as history would show, Hanani had not in fact received a word from the Lord to deliver to the people of Judah. Hananiah encouraged the people of Judah both to resist and even to throw off the yoke of the most dominant military power of the day, the Babylonians. Hananiah encouraged the terribly misguided notion that within two years the Lord would give such a resounding victory to Judah that the treasures the Babylonians had taken out of their temple in Jerusalem just a few years earlier would be brought back. Jeremiah challenged all of these assertions. Jeremiah challenged Hananiah. The message Jeremiah had received from the Lord was very different from what the ruling class wanted to hear. What the Lord had told Jeremiah was that Judah should actually accept the Babylonians ruling over Judah as God's will. Jeremiah said that only in hindsight would it be clear whether it was he or Hananiah who had truly received a word from the Lord for the people of Judah. The situation for us is very different from the uncertainty, uncertainty facing Hananiah and Jeremiah as a result of Babylonian military dominance. We have a reliable and trustworthy connection to God through Jesus. What is uncertain is if and how we will receive it. In the water of holy baptism, the Word and Spirit of God were present, joining us to Christ Jesus in his death and resurrection. Now, some receive that gift and trust it to be effective in their lives. Others either spurn the gift, think it's not showy enough, or even doubt it. But the word present in baptism continues to work in the lives of believers throughout their existence. That word crucifies sin in a believer and reveals the life-giving connection that endures even beyond the grave. This word of God reverberates throughout daily life and conversations and activities in those who have been baptized. That AT&T representative who was standing there before my wife in the oppressive Florida heat finally realized he was never going to close the sale. And my wife was not thrilled about the amount of time that this guy had wasted. But before he walked away, that at t representative had one final question. He said, ma'am, I'm terribly sorry to ask this, but it's really hot out here. Would you be willing to give me a bottle of water? Despite the oppressive heat, those words sent chills down her spine. 
Whoever gives one of these little ones even a cold cup of water will by no means lose the reward. Perhaps unknowingly, the connection with Christ was reaffirmed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O God, whose will it is that we should be adopted as your children by grace, grant that we may not be enveloped by the shadows of error, but always remain in the clear splendor of truth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.